every time I visit Eretz Yisrael, I remind myself of the tremendous loss that I as a Kohen have to endure by living in Chutz La'aretz and not being able to do Birkat Kohanim every single day. It's a tremendous chus. You fulfill a mitzvah every time you do it. And as a matter of fact, according to the way that some of the uh, achronim phrase it, you're fulfilling really three mitzvahs every time you do it. And so <clears throat> there's a big mystery that's been discussed in a number of the classic svarim as to how it happens that in Chutz Laaretz, outside of Yerushalayim, and it seems like Mitzrayim and in Egypt, and outside of many Sephardic communities, there's no Birkas Kohanim, there's no Duchaning. Uh, the word Duchan means platform. And that's why it's called Duchaning, is because the Kohanim ascend to a platform. This was the way that it was done in the Beis HaMikdash, and this is the way typically it's done today also. The Kohanim ascend to a, a platform or to something that they stand on in order to be able to bless, to bless the entire nation. So why don't we Duchan every day? There, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. The Torah says, Kosovarachu has been a Israel. So shall you bless the Jewish people. And it would seem that we have a remnant of it on a daily basis because we say, um, we say the, in, in the Chazor Sashatz, we say, Barchenu Vabracha Hamishuleshes, Batora Aksuba Yide Moshe Adecha. Right? Hamurami Pierano Barab Kaniman Kedoshecha Kaamur. And then we say the triple bracha, bless us Hashem, but what, where are the Kohanim? How come the Kohanim are not getting up? So the first thing that we need to establish is that this, this indeed is a mitzvah. And as we'll see from the postkim, it is a mitzvah bisman hazeh, not only midirabonim, but midiraisa. Um, the Shulchan Aruch writes in the very beginning of Simen Kuf Chav Ches, in source number one, it says, Kol Kohen she'en bo echad mehadvarm hama'akvim, any Kohen who does not have an impediment, a halachic impediment, that would prevent him from duchening, those impediments could be physical and they could also be spiritual. In other words, let's say he's, uh, he's puzzled for the kahuna or he's married to a divorcee or something like that. If he does not go up to duchen when duchening is taking place, even though he's only technically violated one positive mitzvah, it really is considered as if he's over on three positive commandments. Mm-hmm. Provided that he's in the shul when they call and they say the word Kohanim, time to duchen. Oh, Imam Rlo Lalos, Oli Toyot of Orfi, if someone tells him, go ahead, it's time to duchen, go ahead. Or go ahead, wash your hands for duchening, and he doesn't go. He violates a positive commandment because the Torah says, Kosovarachu. And the Mishnah Burr just tells us, Vuhu Kosovarachu Amor Lahem Evisamu Eshemi. The three positive commandments are, So shall you bless the Jewish people. Then it says later in the Pasuk, Amor Lahem say to them, that's the second of the three. And Vesamu Eshemi al Bnei Yisrael Dani Avorachem, which is the following Pasuk, is that they, the Kohanim, shall place my name on Bnei Yisrael and I shall bless them. By the Kohanim extending this blessing, they, in a sense, place Hashem's name on B'nai Yisrael. And that's the third mitzvah. So he says, So it really is only one technically from a metaphysical standpoint. You're only violating one mitzvah. But it's a mitzvah that has three components to it and therefore it's, it should be taken very seriously. And so the fact that we don't do it today, by the way, this could chop a number of nafkaminas in halacha. If a fellow is in shul, and someone goes up to him and says, go duchen, and the, there's no minuk to duchen in the shul, there is no duchening in the shul, that puts him in a really interesting dilemma as to whether he's over a mitzvah saseh by not giving up to duchen. So don't ever go over to a Kohen and tell him to duchen, because you actually could be machshil him and causing him to be over a mitzvah saseh. But that's, but that's not for now. What's really for now is to try and trace the historical reason for why in Ashkenazi communities we don't duchen on a daily basis, if there is such a mitzvah saseh of Kosev Arachu. So this is in la- much later on in Simen Kov Chavchez. It's a very long simen having to do with the laws of Birkas Kohanim. And you have the Ramah in Simen Mem Dalet. We'll just read the whole sif. 
The first is the Machaber, Kohen Afopishu Hu Panui Noseyes Kapav. A Kohen, even though he's married, still Duchens, and one might have thought, I'm sorry, sorry, even though he's single, he should still Duchen. You see, I got confused for a second. Now, the whole issue here, you'll see, what's the issue of being single versus being married? Because when you're married, you're happy. So you might have thought that if you're single, you, you're not happy enough to be able to do it. That's why my Freudian slip here is sort of switch things around. No, but the halacha is, is that even though you feel a sense of incompleteness because you're still single, you still have a mitzvah of doing birkas kohanim. The reason why the mechaber is important is that you'll see why now the Ramah comments on this particular halacha. Because at face value, there doesn't seem to be any connection. But once you understand that the connection is that marriage is associated with a sense of well-being and a sense of happiness. And now we'll see how the Ramah ties into this. He says, V'yesh omrim de'eno no se'kapav, de'hashori below isha, shori below simcha. Because if a Kohen is without a wife, a man is without a wife, then he's without joy. V'hamevarech yesh lo lios b'simcha. And a person who gives and extends a bracha has to do it b'leiv of shalem, has to do it with a full heart. And therefore, you have to be in a state of joy. And if you're a morose, if you're depressed, then you can't properly give the bracha, you can't properly fulfill the mitzvah. So therefore, the Ramah says that there are some opinions that would argue that a single man should not do nasli. But nevertheless, even though the Mordechai wants to argue that you don't, nevertheless, the minig is that he does do However, if a single man says, you know what, I would prefer not to do it, and I'm not such a happy guy, then we don't stop him, we don't protest. Um, but he shouldn't be in the synagogue when we announce Kohanim or when we tell people to go wash their hands, because then he's putting himself in a suffix of whether he has an actual mitzvah say that he would be mevatel by not going up to Duchen. And that, that's interesting. This is also the same basis for saying that an Ovel, called Yud Beis Chodesh, should not Duchen as well because he in a, he's in a state of sadness during the year of, of Avelus. And that's also a reason why the Minig is for many Kohanim who are in Avelus during the first year for a parent that they don't Duchen, they step outside during Birkas Kohan. But there too, you, they have to make sure that they step outside before uh, before it's time for the Kohanim to step outside. So sometimes that would require them to stand right by the door, you know, uh, by Kedusha, or to leave when all the other Kohanim leave and then just not wash their hands and stay outside. Now here's, here's where we get to, to, the, to, the, to the main halacha. The minig is, in all of these countries, referring to Ashkenaz, that we only duchen an yantif. Mishum Sha'az Shruyim Bisimchas Yom Tov, Vitov Lev Hu Yivarech. Because only on Yantif are we immersed in the Simcha of Yantif. And only a person of good heart is really fit to make a Bracha. Mashain Kain Bisha'ar Yamim Afilu Bishabasa Sasha. And that's not true by any other day. That's not true by any other day. And he says it's not even true on Shabbos. On Shabbos Kodesh. When you're supposed to have put aside all of your worries, nevertheless, you're still not in a full state of full-out joy, full-out simcha, because she trudim vihirhurim al michyasam ve al bitul melachtam. He says, why is that? Because a person, on, even on Shabbos, is worried about their parnasa. He says two things: hirhurim al michyasam. How am I going to make a parnasa? And oh, I'm not working today. It's even worse. So those two things combined make Shabbos a less than fully enjoyable experience. Does it affect Yantif? Not Yantif. Yantif, you pull out all the stops. After all, Yantif's only a few times a year, so you can afford to party on Yantif. But Shabbos, it's a weekly thing, and you're so. Oh, you know, you're still, you're in Ashkenaz and the, and the, the, the evil pirates has coll just collected half your income from taxes and how am I going to put food on the table? It's, it's a terrible life and so therefore you can't do it. 
And even on Yantif, we only allow you to do him once, which is during Musaf. Why? Because you're <laughs> Shacharis, you're still in Shul. Oh, the rabbi's going to still give a drasha. I can't stand being here, right? But by Musaf already, you're anticipating running home, and you're going to have a wonderful meal with the family, so you're in good spirits by Musaf, and then it's okay. So the only, only Musaf on Yantif, where there's a simcha at the end of davening, are you allowed to go in Dochen? The Chol Shachar is Musaf She'enosin Bo Kapayim, Omer Hashat Zilokeinu Velokei Avoseinu Kedel El Sofsin Kuv Chafav. That the Shliach Tzibor, as a substitute for the Duchening itself, says Barcheinu Babracha, as we just mentioned. V'yom HaKippurim No Simbo Kapayim Kemo Biyom Tov. On Yom Kippur, we Duchen also, just like on Yom Tov which means, ostensibly, the way that the Ramah is explaining it, Yom Kippur is a day that's of greater joy than a regular Shabbos. I mean, uh, 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 what a simcha. The simcha of having a kapara, the simcha of having all of my son's sins wiped away. What a great simcha. Yeah, so that's why you duchen on Yom Kippur as well. V'yesh mekamos shenosim kabo kapayim b'ne'ilah, v'yesh mekamos afilu b'shachris. And there are places where they duchen at ne'ilah, and there are places where they do it even in Shacharis, and this is even in Ashkenaz. Of course, our minhag is only to once on Yom Kippur, which is at, um, <coughs> which is at Musa. But not Rosh Hashanah. Um, no, Yom, Rosh Hashanah would be subsumed under Yom Tov, I would assume. I think the Chiddush that he's saying is, is that even though Yom Kippur is a day of fasting and enoy, right? So we don't necessarily associate Yom Kippur with, um, with Simchas Yom Tov. Rosh Hashanah, there is Simchas Yom Tov. Simcha? Yeah, there is a Simchas Yantif, even though we don't say Hallel, like the Gemara says, because Sifrei Chayim is Sifrei Nesu Munachem Lefanav, so therefore there's a supposed sense of trepidation, but there's still Simchas Yantif, there's still a mitzvah of Simchas Yantif on Rosh Hashanah. But the Chiddush is, is that even on Yom Kippur, where there's no mitzvah of Simchas Yantif, because there's no food, and you know, nevertheless you still have a Simcha of something, right? And therefore you do it. Doesn't that argue for Tuba? The second happiest day of the year. Yom Kippur and Tuba, the happiest day of the year. Yeah, but there's still you got to go to work. Oh, you got to go to work. <laughs> Tuba, right? Remember, for the Ramah, it's it's about it's about Tirdas. What does he call it? He says, Trudim al Michyasam. People are constantly distracted and thinking about how am I going to make a living, and that's true on Tuba as well. It's a very strange Hagdara. It's a very strange kind of framing of the halacha, which he says there's not real simcha even on Shabbos during the rest of the year, only on Yantiv. And it almost seems like there's more here than meets the surface. It almost seems that way, because otherwise it's really, it's not a very satisfactory uh, demarcation of when you do it and when you don't do it. How do you abrogate a mitzvah de Raisa? And also, how do you abrogate a mitzvah de Raisa? Okay. So let's take a look at the Taz on the Shulchan Aruch. The Taz says, She'ein Nesiyas Kapayim Ela Biyom Tov. The Beis Yosef B'Shem HaOgra. Now you know, of course, the Beis Yosef represents the Sephardic opinion. And, um, and he says, Kosev HaTam Lama E'in Nesiyas Kapayim B'Chol Yom B'Pnei Shemina Glitvo B'Chol Yom Kasha Litvo The Beis Yosef quotes a different reason from the Agur. The Agur is a Rishon, and the, and the Agur says that the reason why we don't Duchen every day, very similar to the Ramah, who also doesn't Duchen every day, but he gives a totally different reason, because in order to do Nesiyas Kapayim, you have to go to Mikvah first. And it's very difficult to go to Mikvah every day. Not everyone has a Mikvah available to them. And that's why we don't Duchen every day. The Cholaka Beis Yosef also, the Beis Yosef disagrees. Shalohuka Huskar Begemara Tevilala Nesiyas Kapayim. Never is there a requirement. Anytime duchening is discussed in the Gemara, there's never a requirement that is attached to the Kohen, that he has to go to Mikvah beforehand. And so let's say a person wants to be machmir, but you can't be machmir to bring yourself to not do a mitzvah. Right? You can be machmir to place extra requirements on the performance of a mitzvah, but if your chumr is going to bring you to the point where, oh yeah, I didn't go to mikvah today, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to do the mitzvah. That you can't say. 
V'rabim me ha-kohanim porshim in shoseim b'yom tov b'shvil ha-duchen. Furthermore, the Taz writes that there are many people who, many kohanim, who decide they're going to be celibate on yom tov because they feel that it's necessary to duchen in a state of purity. So, v'shibushu be'enai, and he says this is uh, a mistake. De'im choshishin l'tumas keri u'lahachim re'el atzmam, because what, what are they worried about? That they're going to... Uh, that they're going to have an emission, they're going to, in the course of being with their wives, they'll have what's called Tumas Keri, they'll become tame. So they want to be machmer on themselves, so hayulahem litbo kaidem. So then they should have gone to mikvah before yantif. But you see, what happens is that these kohanim don't go to mikvah before yantif, and then they're celibate. So what have they accomplished? They haven't accomplished anything. Darek for yeshel of Tumas Keri, because if you haven't gone to mikvah before yantif, you already have Tumas Keri from before. So it doesn't make any sense, this practice. He says, V'su dahab eretz Yisrael v'chomalchus Mitzrayim nesiyus kapayim kol yimos hashana. And furthermore, I'll argue, and you see that in Eretz Yisrael and in Egypt, they duchen every day. V'chayifrashu la'olam in minin shoseim. Are you suggesting that the Kohanim should be perpetually celibate and not be with their wives? True, their trans the Kohanim translates as priests, but not that kind of priests, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Valkain Nira Sha'in Ta'am Lohev. And therefore it would seem to me that there's absolutely no reason to be celibate on Yantiv. The Kol Shikanim Nizdam Natfilas Mitzvah Shain Lavatul Hamitzvah Bishvilzeh Sha'in Lo Yesod Ve'ikar. And surely if a, the woman's going to mikvah on the night of Yantiv and a guy's a coin says, Oh, I got a duchin tomorrow, honey, sorry. That's a, that's a terrible thing. That's, that's actually a perversion of halacha because the requirement to go to mikvah before duchening has no source in, for it whatsoever, even though there may be a practice of, of uh, extra uh, stringent kohanim to do that. But to be mavatal the mitzvah of duchening or to be mavatal the mitzvah of mitzvah's ona, which is to, uh, to, to provide your wife with conjugal rights the night of the mikvah, that would be, uh, that would be criminal, that would be wrong. Now, uh, let's just go a little bit further. The Mishnah Burra says, going commenting on the... So, so far we've seen the Taz, who quotes the Beis Yosef, and the Beis Yosef is clear, the Beis Yosef, and that we know that in Sephardi, many Sephardi communities, I'm not sure if it's in all Sephardi communities, but in many Sephardi communities, they duchen every day, uh, based on, uh, probably based on this Beis Yosef's uh, questioning of this practice, Beis Yosef assumes that it's because of Tvila. And he says there's no basis for that, not to duchen just because you didn't go to mikvah. There's no requirements for mikvah. It's a, it's a chumrah, but it's not a reason to stop you from duchening. So we have a difference of opinion as to why people don't duchen every day in certain communities. The Ramah says that it's based on the lack of simcha. The Agur says that it's based on the lack of tefillah. So you see an example of a situation where there's a practice that's in place, and we're trying to figure out why that practice is true. Now, be, and, and the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm making this observation is because if there was a practice and everyone understood the reason, we wouldn't have a difference of opinion as to why this practice is so. So you see the Ramah gives one reason, the Agur gives a different reason, and Beis Yosef argues with the Agur based on his reason. Beis Yosef is not even aware of the reason of Simcha. Right? So you see that the practice predates the reason. And that's why it's a, it's a bit of a mystery as how this minute got started. The Mishnah Brura and Simon Kuf Chavches Sivkatan Kuf Sama, well, we'll see a few Sivkatans. He says, Medinos Elu. He says, in all of our areas in Ashkenaz, we don't duchen every day. He says, Uve Eretz Yisrael Bechol Malchus Mitzrayim Haminag Lisa Kapayim Bechol Yom Bahaposkim Kol Sulam in Hagam Bazem. The Poskim referring to Beis Yosef and especially the Sephardish Poskim praise this practice of duchening every day. They praise the practice of Eretz Yisrael in Egypt. And if you take a look at the Sharet Sion in the footnote, he says, the Mishnah Buri even makes a point of saying in the Sharet Sion, he says, V'dad in esiyas kapayim b'chutz la'aretz hugam kein midir raisa. You have to realize that this is, you're not just playing with the Rabbanans here. Duchening b'zman hazeh, even in chutz la'aretz is a mitzvah, asay dir raisa. He 
There is an opinion who suggests that the mitzvah is only deoraisa if the birkas kohanim is done in the Beis Hamikdash. Shushagabaza. He says that's a mistake. The ishtamitze sifra parsha shmini piska tezayin. The sifri parsha shoftim piska nun aleph. Ayin sham. It's very clear from the midrash that it's a mitzvah sasei deoraisa bisman hazeh. The Yerushalmi Nazir, who the Besotel Amit Chesamet Beis, does Tilsus Dibur Amaschul Kol. He quotes a number of sources. He says, "Veherani Echad Mechak Me Azman, Shugam Kein Eged Bavli Chul and Kufla Amit Gimel Ayin Sham." The Gampash, the Dikra, and even the very simple import of the text of Scripture says, "Ulavarech Bishmo Ad Hayom Hazeh," that Hashem has assigned the Kohanim to bless in His name to this very day. To this very day implies that there is a perpetual mitzvah for the Kohanim to bless using Hashem's name. Mash Mishen Oheik Tamid, it's Mash from the Pasuk itself, that this is a perpetual mitzvah, I say. We continue along in the Mishnah Bura, going back up to source number five in Sifkat and Kut Samechei, the Mishnah Bura says, Ela Biyom Tov Nishum Bechulei, we only duchen on Yom Tov because of Simcha, Bein Shechal Becholo B'Shabbos, he says, now this is true whether Yantav coincides with a week that where the coincides with Shabbos. He says, V'yesh makom ha-shinogin shein no sim kapayim afilu b'yomtav kishachal b'Shabbos aval ein min ha-gzeh ikr klal kamo shikas v'har b'yachronim. This is really not the topic for tonight, but I just, I just want to observe. When I was growing up, I used to daven in a shul where if, if Shabbos and Yantav coincided, the Kohanim didn't duchen. But the Mishnah Bura says that that's clearly an error. There is no basis for that minute. If you see that from the from the Ramah that the real reason is Simcha, why just because it's Shabbos you're going to have less Simcha? Not just the opposite. If anything, there'll be more Simcha. There's more reason to Dochem. Less singing. Let the, oh, so why is there less singing? Why is there no singing? Because we don't say the, the you guys don't say the Yehiratzim and the Rebbeinu Shalolams about dreams, right? Now in Eretz Yisrael there's never any singing because they Dochem every day. But when there's only duchening on a periodic basis, so the Gemara says that if a person had a bad dream, he should stand in front of the Kohanim during the Sias Kapayim and say, Chalom Chalamti, I had a dream, and I don't know what it means, but I want it to be interpreted for the good. And the blessing of the Kohanim uh, places a blessing on that dream so that it should turn out for the good. On Shabbos, we don't say tchinot. On Shabbos, we don't say supplications. And that's why the Kohanim don't say the ayayayis, because no one's saying the supplication. But to not do chin at all, there's no reason for that. So there have been different theories. What? Tadri So that's not a question of tadri. First of all, tadri v'shein and is which one comes first? Yeah, yeah, no, but Shabbos is not a reason to not do chin. Shabbos is just that if it's Shabbos alone, you don't do chin. But if it's Yom and Shabbos, Shabbos is not a, dis a detractor from the Simchas Yantiv. Other Rabbah. Right? Same with Shalom Leichem, right? Well, some people don't say Shalom Leichem. No, but that's but that's but that's a different reason. That's because you don't want. That's that's going in the other direction. That you don't want Shabbos to overshadow the Yantiv. That's a totally different reason. But the bottom line is, there's no reason for this minute to not duchen just because Shabbos coincides with Yantiv. I've heard different reasons. Over the years, some, some poskim say that it has to do with water. We're worried because the Kohanim have to wash their hands. We're worried that someone may carry the water for Natilas Yadayim for the Kohanim. Mm. That might be one reason why it crept up. It also could have to do with, uh, with Tvila B'mikvah. Maybe the mikvah is not open on Shabbos. Maybe if there's a problem of going to mikvah on Shabbos if it's just for a Chumrah. It could, have to, it could have to do with a, a number of things, but in the final analysis, the Mishnah Burr citing a number of Kronim says that there's really no basis to not do if just because Yantif and Shabbos coincide. No agua kohanim sil sil bats and litful bear of Yantif, Mishum Messias Kapaim Shalomachar. And he says the Kohanim have a special chumr that they do is that they go to mikvah on Erev Yantif because they're going to do him. The Gambalav hachitzar chadam letaris asmu beregel. That everyone should go to mikveh or Yantiv, says the Mishnah Bura. And in any event, if you didn't go to mikveh, it's not ma'akev. So if you live in Thornhill and the mikveh is not open on Arab Sukkot, because it's only open on Arab Yom Kippur, but it's not open Arab Sukkot, don't fret, you can still do it. Okay, Kuf Samachvav, Shurim B'Simchas Yom Tov, V'Yom Kippur, M'Gam Keno Simcha Paim Jishbo, Simchas Mechilo Slicha. So there the Mishnah Bura spells it out. He says, what does the Ramah mean that on Yom Kippur we also do it? Because of the simcha that you have for being forgiven for all of your sins. Fine. Great. 
Beautiful. Now, this is a long tshuva. The definitive tshuva on the subject of why we don't duchen every day in Chutz La'aretz is from a tshuva from the base of Ephraim, or from Rabbi Ephraim Margolios, who was the author of the Mate Ephraim, who was the author of the Shar Ephraim, the classic halachic works on, uh, on the High Holidays and on Kriya Satora, respectively. He lives at the end of the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, and he writes a massive tshuva on the laws of Nesias Kapayim, and I'm going to save that. I want us to skip over that for now. There's a there's a prefatory gemara that we'll need to have our to have for this for to be able to go over the tshuva. And it turns out that the base of Ephraim, Rev. Ephraim Margolios, gives a total of five different arguments that I'm able to count as to why Kohanim don't duchen and chutz la'aretz. We're going to go through that. If we don't get to it tonight, we'll go through with we'll go through it in Mitzvah Shem next week. But because it's such a lengthy tshuva and our time is limited, I want us to do, do the other materials and then maybe we'll come back to it. Let's go to page five. The Chassam Sofer says, at the end of a lengthy tshuva, um, where the Chassam Sofer is talking about verifying the authenticity of a Kohen, he says, Bein kach hu bein kach leiz kazoz in kan beis meichosh bein yinzeh v'hamachmir eno elo min hamasmihem there's no reason to be machmir to prevent someone from duchening v'yadati ki hagomon moreinu harav zalman margolios v'tshuvas beis Ephraim nisorer alzeh lomar demishum ki ein hakohanim nosim kapayim b'chol yom v'yom bizman einu he says, I noticed that the, um, that the base of Ephraim came up, which was trying to come up with a number of different reasons as to why Kohan and Bizman Hazet do not do it on a daily basis. He says, Venerally, Tam Pashut, Sam Sofer says, it seems to me a very, a very clear reason, very obvious reason. The Nesiyas Kapayim Ksiv Bikra Achar Avoda. Because Duchening appears in the scripture right after it talks about the dedication of the Mizbeach in Parshas Naso, as you know. It's the Duchene, it's the laning for, uh, um, let's see, it's the laning, it's Parshas Naso. Right, so we have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, each Nasi brought his uh, his Karban, and then it came time for the Kohanim uh, to Duchen, and that's, so, that, so therefore you see that. Uchiri Yalfina Reish Perk Beis the Megillah Medichsiv, the Vayered Me'asos Achatos, Vayivarech Esa'am, and furthermore, the Gemara Megillah actually puts it right after the consecration of the Mishkan, that after Aaron brought a, a Korban Chatas, he blesses the people. And so the Gemara puts that section, which is in Parshas Shmini, and says that that's what's taking place for Birkas Kohanim in Parshas Nasa. Utefila b'makom avoda. And we know that prayer is the surrogate in the absence of a temple when there's no uh, Karbanos to bring. And we know that if uh, the avoda, if the sacrificial service is not kosher, it's uh, tainted in some way, it's contaminated in some way, then you can't have a legitimate birkas kohanim resting on the nation. In other words, according to the Chassam Sofer, the basis for, their, for God blessing the people via the kohanim is that they've just completed a beautiful avoda in the, in the temple. And so granted, we don't have a temple today, but when we complete a beautiful tefillah, so then it's appropriate to have birkas kohanim to rest on the nation, to give them a pat on the back for having done such a beautiful service to, to the Lord. So the Chassam Sofer wants to suggest, Beheyos ba'avo anoseinu harabim kol yamos hachol, trudim al hamichya v'alakalkola, v'rovat filos b'li kavana, the Tir de Maruba, he says, let's face it, Chevra, he says, most of the davening that we do on a daily basis, we're so far drayed and far shter from all of the things going on in our lives and all of the different distractions and worries that we have on our back when we come to shul on a daily basis. He says that most of our davening is without proper kavanah. 
And the, therefore, he says, it's kikar, it's fila below kavana, kikarban sheno roi. He says, davening without proper kavana is like bringing a carbon that's tainted. It's like bringing an improper carbon. And therefore, the Chassam Sofer says, Alkein mevarchem biyom tov shaholam penuyum umechabim bitfilasam. And therefore, it's only, a, therefore, it's not appropriate to duch and say birkas kohanim and give the nation a blessing when God doesn't want to bless the people after a tainted carbon. But on Yantif, on Yantif, we can have beautiful kavana. On Yantif, the Jewish people come to shul and everyone's focused and at attention. You can hear a pin drop in the synagogue because everyone's so focused on their tefillos with tremendous kavana and with a smile on their face because they have a sublime uh, conjunction with the Almighty. And that's why you duchen on Yantif because that's when the carbon of tefillah is complete and wholesome. And therefore he says, Because of the fairish hamachsar al aminak shanog yamavarek hayyaladu, the Shabbos v'yom tov dafka. And he says, and there, he said, uh, there's a machsar that I have, he says, that that's the reason why we only bless our children on Shabbos and Yom Tov. It's contradicting himself right there. A little bit of a contradiction on Shabbos, but the point is, is that why do we dafka only bless our children on Friday nights and on Yom Tov? We bless our children on those times because we have, because we, our children are deserving of a bracha during those times when their kavanas are pure, when they're doing the proper tefillahs. But we don't want to give them a bracha during the week because they don't deserve it. Like the Chassam Sofer is saying, the tefillahs that we say during the week, they just don't have the, the quality to warrant a birkas kohanim after those tefillahs. How would that apply to Eretz Yisrael? Eretz Yisrael? How could you live in Eretz Yisrael and Davin without Kavana? Mm -hmm. Eretz Yisrael demands so much of, its, of the, those who choose to live there. So obviously a person who Davin's in Eretz Yisrael, surely he has Kavana. The, just the, the, the air, the avira, the Eretz Yisrael will instill you with such awe and with such uh, spiritual focus. They don't do that in Sfat, they don't do I was just looking online, I found someone who talks about what, why the Minig in Sfas, and in many areas in the Galil, is only to do on Shabbos and not during the week. Actually, only when there's a Musaf. They only do when there's a Musaf. So they'll do on Rosh Chodesh Musaf, they'll do on Shabbos Musaf and Yantuf Musaf. So one, one source that I saw states that Sfas is a pretty miserable place to live, even in Eretz Yisrael. In other words, it, people, it's 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 schwer zu sein at Sfaser, you know, it's difficult to live in Sfas. Is that amongst the Sephardi too, Sfas, or just the uh, Ashkenazim? It's only by the Ashkenazim, interestingly enough. As a matter of fact, we, we, we davened in two, there are two Batek, just now we were in Sfas, we were in two Batek Knesset Arizal. There's an Ashkenazi Arizal synagogue and there's a Sephardish uh, Arizal synagogue. And the, Ariz, the Sephardi Arizal, they, they duchen every day. And the Ashkenazi, there's a sign, because I, I went over, I was about to wash my hands, and the guy taps me on the shoulder, he shows me the sign, it says, only duchening during Musaf. Okay. But, but, but look at the Chassam Sofer, just, just think about the Chassam Sofer, and next time it's Yantif, and you're about to daven the Amida, without giving it a thought, and just realize that for the Chassam Sofer, you have to be deserving of the, bir the Birkas Kohanim because you've just done a magnificent Amida. And you really only have the ability to do that on Yantif. Wow. It, this, is the, this, is one of, this is the only chuba that I've seen that places the onus on the Yisraelim in the audience. All of the other chubas that the, when we look at the, uh, the base of Ryan, we'll see the onus is on the Kohan. Why they can't do it every day. But here, it's got, uh, the Chassam Sofer says, the problem is with us Yisraelim, we're not worthy of the bracha during the rest of the year. So it's a fascinating, fascinating insight. Before we get to the Arach HaShulchan, take a look at this uh, source number 11, Sefer Alios Eliyahu, which is from the Talmidei Hagra. 
It was written in the 19th century, discussing many of the Vilna Gaon's practices, because the Vilna Gaon was a great innovator. A lot of people think that the Vilna Gaon was following Mesorah, but there were many times when he departed from the Mesorah of his time and innovated a lot of things. In, in that sense, he was very much like the Arizal. In other words, he had certain, he was plugged into certain sources that you and I don't see and don't, and don't understand. And therefore, he changed a number of different things. He innovated a number of different things. And this is a footnote called uh, Milo Sasulam. It's footnote 13. Uh, or it's the section called Milo Sasulam, and it's footnote 13. And then in that very long footnote, he talks about a number of things which the Gon changed from the Mesorah that was up, known up until that time. He says, Bipasa Shulchan Hilchos Eretz Yisrael, Das Rabbeinu Hagon. He says, so the opinion of the, of the Vilna Gon was, the opinion of the Gra was that really Kohanim should duchen every day, even in Chutz La'aretz. But what's interesting is, and it's interesting, in his commentary to the Shulchan Aruch, he never makes a note of this. It's only in a, a side sefer. He says, I refer you to the Chsam Sofer, and he doesn't, you know, that's the tshuva that we just saw. Now he says, V'shamati shahaya rabbeinu zal rotze lahadik v'beis ha-medr shalom gamkein v'chol sheyuso ha-kohanim kapehim. I heard that rabbeinu wanted to practice birkas kohanim in his base medrash during the weekday. He wanted to institute that uh, kohanim shuduchim. Um, and on that very day when he was planning to institute the duchening for that day, he was arrested for libels that were placed against him, for you know false libels that were placed against him. The government came and arrested him. Because there was some kind of dispute that broke out between the Rav, the, the Gra, and the Kahal of Vilna, as is known. And I guess in those days, if you were Broigus with the Rav, you had him arrested. Those were the good old days. Um, but in any event, um, that's what, for whatever reason, this was a sign. So when the Gon got out of jail, he said, no, I've learned my lesson. That was a sign from heaven that even though the Svara dictates that we should institute, reinstitute Duchening daily, I'm not going to do it. He says, He's referring to Rav Chaim Velazhner, one of the key disciples of the Vilna Gon, the, who's, the, who's the uncle of the person writing this. She says, that night... The night before that we were going to duchen in the base madrash, the base madrash burned down. And he says, and from here you see that from heaven it was decreed that this should not happen. It's not the proper practice. Perhaps out of honor to the previous generations who did not duchen on a daily basis. Okay, that's just the smidgen. Take a look at the Arach HaShulchan who has the same kind of attitude, which is basically... I don't get it. I'm not really sure why we don't do it every day, but the fates have decreed that it's, it's not meant to be. Or HaShulchan in source number 10 says, There really is no legitimate reason for us not to do it on a daily basis. And as many have written, this is a very poor minhag, it's not a worthy minhag. But what can we do? He says, Perhaps it's, like, it's almost like a heavenly voice has come out and like uh, made a decree on the Jews of Chutz Laaretz that they shall not do it on a daily basis. I have a tradition that two great rabbis of previous generations 
try to reinstitute duchening on a daily basis. And when the day came that it was supposed to happen, there was a big tumult, and it didn't end up, was not able to happen. He, I believe he's referring to both the Gra and Chaim Velazhinah. And therefore, it say, they said it seems from Shemayim that this, this, that this is not meant to be. He says, we could argue, make a halachic argument as follows. That the Zohar says that in order to properly bless the people for Birkas Kohanim, you need a joy that is of the same caliber of Aaron and his sons on the eighth day of the Miluim. And that's why the Torah, in introducing the Birkas Kohanim, says, this is how you should bless them. You see Aaron and his sons, how happy they are in this day? This is, of course, right before Nadav and Aviyu died, but they didn't know that at the time. Hashem says, Kosev The way that you're happy today, this is the way that you should bless the Jews in all generations. He says the same thing as the Mishnah Bura. That minute that used to be that people would not do when Yom Tov and Shabbos coincided, he says there's no basis for that, so that's already out the window. He says, but what's clear is, he says, and also, technically, you're allowed to duchen if you have, haven't had an ablution after, after having an emission, but if you want to be machmir, great, but it's not required, because like you see in Eretz Yisrael and in Egypt and in Gaza, they go, uh, they, I think that's what Asia means, maybe it's, is Asia Asia. Some, oh, Asia. 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 Asia, maybe it's Asia, right? Right. I don't think they do <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But no sin a kohanim kapeim b'chol yom, but kohanim duchen every day. Okay. Now, of course, the, the main event, the main event is, uh, is the uh, base of rhyme. So let's, look, why don't we at least get started on it. But I, what I've provided you with now is enough background information for us to be able to deduce that great Gedole Hador of previous generations tried their best uh, to find a reason for why there's no Duchani and Chutzlars on a daily basis. There seems to be a dissatisfaction with the reasons offered, even to the point where people like the Vilna Gon and Reb Chaim Velazhner tried to reinstitute Duchani on a daily basis in Chutzlars. And something interceded from a heavenly source and prevented it from happening. So we certainly wouldn't want to tamper with the status quo. Maybe we'll just start the first argument of the base of Ryan. Couldn't you think that even mentioning Egypt would uh, would give it also for I mean Egypt's not air to throw, so it's clearly it's been done before. You mean in in, in Chutz Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, pro, it's I guess it's not. It's the criterion is not Eretz Yisrael versus Chutz Laaretz. It's in certain regions of Chutz Laaretz. He said he took up the uh, in, in in Mitzrayim of, of Eretz Yisrael, or er, the Mitzrayim Egyptians Egyptian Jews took on the Minhagim of Eretz Yisrael. Could be. Anyway, bedaver asher shal kavod taras or bedaver haminag hanahog b'chol medinos elu shelogi okanam nosim kapem kilo biyom tov levad. And by the way, the text that I have in front of you is extremely abridged. You'll see it's quite a lengthy tshuva, but if you go into the original base of Ephraim, it's probably two to three times the length. So I've really cut it down and um, tried to make it of a more manageable size. He says, w what's the reason for our minute today that we only do Hanan Yantav? Yesh mi shalibo nog for he says, and there's some, there are some people who have raised objections to the current practice. That because we know that there's a mitzvah that says the oraisa to duchen on a daily basis. So listen to the two questions. Number one, what's the basis? Is there a basis for only duchening on yantif? And number two. Do we have the ability today to reinstitute the daily duchen? 
Okay, so here's what the base of Ephraim starts off with. What year is this written? This is late 1700s, early 1800s. I don't know exactly. I mean, the, uh, the, 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 the Rabbi Ephraim Margolios is born around 1740 something, 1750 something, and he dies uh, in the early 1800s or 1820, something like that. So whenever this was written, it's around the turn of the, the turn of the 19th century. Okay? So, tshuva, v'atchila avar lo ki haminog shanachnu nogim hayom shelo yisto kohanim kapeim ki im biyom tov. He says, first of all, you should know that the minig that we have today to only duchen an yantiv, the yesh mekom lo shenagu af b'shabasos, and some have a minig only to duchen an shabbos, like they do in spas. He says, hu minig kadum yoter min chamisha me'od shana. This is a minig that is over 500 years old. It goes back over 500 years from 1800. So, so for us, it goes back over 700 years. Okay? So, Kimavur Besefer Tashbeitz Katan Shechibur Talmidu Shal Maharami Rutenberg, Rabbi Shal Arash. So this minig is documented from the times of the Rebbe of the Rush, the Maharami Rutenberg. So we're going back to our, the times of the early Rishonim in Ashkenaz. The Chavar here is Sicha Shayaminak Zeba Ashkenaz Lifne Maharam the Talmida of the Michal Marasal, Umizman Hahuad Atta, so there's more than Yoser Mechamisha Meod Shana. He says there's more than 500 years since that time. He says, Ve Atta Ahuvi Yididi, Ye Revi Yishpo to Kain Sichlo as Hagiborim and Sheh Hashem Haela. He says, Take a look at the great Gedolim that existed 500 years ago. Asher Hakatan Shebe Talmidei Talmidei Hem. He says their smallest limb is thicker than our widest limb. In other words, they're, the tiniest of, their, of those disciples that lived in those times is greater than any of our greatest gedolim today. He says, Ha'im Amor Yomar, Biyad Ramah, Aroch Itam Milchama. Is it appropriate that we should go out with, a, with an arrogant, uplifted hand and to wage battle with that position, He says, do you think we have the chutzpah that we're going to go and brazenly wage battle and say we know better than what the, the, what the Marami Rutenberg knew? That all of these great gedolim knew back then? Do you think he's alluding here to the Ramah and the Shulchan Aruch when he uses this word poetic, the Yagrama uh, Oh, very nice, very nice, Laser. Not sure. I don't know why he would have to allude to it. I mean, everyone knows the Ramah. No, but he, I just wanted Yeah, interesting. Va'afim haya ne'elame itanu tam hadavr legamre. He says, and this would be true, he says, that we would never have the chutzpah to try and tamper with such an ancient minhag, even if we couldn't figure out the reason why we don't do it every day. He says, but, the kalvachomer de taima umriba. But, not only that, but I'm going to give you some good reasons why we don't do it on a daily basis. He says, veleka drora di isura, shanachnu mechuyovim lasos, oznenu kafar cheses, lishmo abekol divreim vachareim lo nishneh. And therefore, there's not even a, 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 a slight aspect of prohibition for our lack of duchening, because we are obligated to incline our ear and make our ears like a, uh, like a hearing aid, like what those big cones that they used to have in the old days. We have to make our ears like an ear cone to be able to listen attentively to what the rabbis have to say, and we are never allowed to change. Like basically, the base of Ephraim is saying, like Chadash Asr Min HaTorah. You know that this is an, a well ensconced minhag in so many Jewish communities. How would you? Why would you ever want to tamper with something that even the Rishonim knew was so? Obviously, he's using rhetorical language. Anytime you find rhetorical language, you know that there is a an insistence on the preservation of of a practice, even in the face of good arguments. All right, this is. This is, many times, this type of language appears in shuvas when you want to be insistent on a practice even in the face of arguments that are very sound and reasonable. Do we know what the tour said? 
I'm sure we do know what the tour is. I don't have it in front of me right now. I don't have the tour in front of me, but to take, you'll take a look at the tour. Rabbi, right, this is a classic case of Minigav Seinu. It's a classic case of Minigav Seinu. This is the this is our minute. But you know something? It's really it's. <coughs> but to say that it's a classic case implies that you have so many situations like this. But we really we don't. There are very few instances in halacha where we where despite our best arguments, we end up doing the way that the minute is, even though the old minute doesn't really make that much sense.